handing over to you, Suzanne. Okay, hello. Can everybody hear me? Yes, yes, good, good. Excellent. Um, okay, so yes, thank you very much for a lovely introduction. And um, I'm so pleased when Parent Space came and asked me to do this because um, if you're a parent, then I promise you batch cooking will revolutionise your life. And um, it's not about that old fashioned batch cooking as I'm going to go into in a minute. So um, just to let you know what I'm going to do, I'm not actually going to cook today because I have a ton of videos out there all about cooking and showing you every recipe under the sun. And um, but what I don't often do is get a chance to chat and give you the whole ethos about how good it'll be and how much it's going to help you. So um, I thought I would do that today. I did plan on doing a quick fish pie, but in true Paddington style, and I have a child sit upstairs in bed. So my whole plan today was to drop one off, drop them off at the school run, nip to Tesco and Gala Shields, which is my local one, and get the food. And actually, I haven't done the school run. So I've got a sick child that I've just made scrambled eggs for for lunch. So um, so no cooking today, but I'm going to run through tons of top tips for you and lots of stuff. So just to give you a background about myself, I'm called Suzanne Mulholland. I am also called The Batch Lady on um, social media. I started about three years ago and I live in the Ettrick Valley in the Scottish Borders, in a farm in the middle of nowhere. Um, and how I really got into um, this in terms of Batch Lady is when I got married and had kids, I realised, like many of you watching this today, were that all of a sudden, cooking dinner was like groundhog day. I was like, what, every night? Every night you want to do this? Even on some nights I didn't feel like eating, but I had to feed everybody else. And, um, and I came from a family of like, my parents taught, my mother taught me how to cook, my mother-in-law taught me some great meals. So I can cook, no problem. I'm not the best, but I can do all the sort of like usual family sort of things. And um, big farming family, so we know what we're doing in terms of like cooking for the masses. But um, I just couldn't believe that every day that you have to do the same thing over and over again. And not, not only that, but as, as you parents will know, you have to do it in the witching hour between 5 and 7 p.m., which is like I get home from work at 5.50 and I've picked up the kids from school. I've got two dogs with their legs crossed that need walked and the kids need to get changed and do their homework. And I've got to get a meal on the table. And I haven't even taken my coat off at that point, you know, having walked, worked in, walked, walked in from work. So many of you will know what that's like. And I found that witching hour when I had children that were like um, two and four, and I was also feeding some elderly parents who live on the farm as well. I found that really stressful that I was trying to cook a meal, keep multi-generations sort of going from age two to age 70, and one needed a bath and the other one needed their teeth brushed and all of this. So I decided that I was going to batch cook everything, get ready when, um, basically got organized when my youngest was at nursery and just cook for the week ahead and get it all in the freezer. So that's how I started. And um, I have a, ma a background in time management. So um, everything that I learned when I worked in London, I suddenly realized you can put all of that into not just your um, professional work day, but you can put it into your normal life and you can make your life so much easier. So what batch cooking does is it gives you, it helps you out in terms of time, which you're going to see as we go through some stuff. It helps you save money um, because you're not wasting food. It stops you wasting food as well. But the most important thing that it does for us as parents is it takes away that headspace that we have all the time, which many of you might feel exactly the same. At three o'clock in the afternoon, when you go to pick up the kids and you've got that like, what am I cooking for dinner? What have I got in the house? Do I need to stop at the co-op on the way home? And there's a multitude of things that are burling around your head and batch cooking just stops that. So batch cooking allows you to go like, so it's 6 p.m. every night, my phone goes off, I'm in the kitchen anyway, I walk over to my freezer, I pull out the next meal, I put it in the fridge to defrost, I wake up in the morning, check it, it's usually started to defrost, go to my work, come back out, take that meal, put it in the cooker. That's all I do on a work night. It takes about three minutes, okay? There's even tons of meals that I'm gonna go through that you don't even need to defrost. So it takes away that massive amount of headspace that you've used up in terms of thinking about meals. Um, now, 
In terms of using your freezer, before we get into any of that, I've got piles of stuff down here I'm going to show you. In terms of using your freezer, you should see your freezer like a remote control, okay? Now, I'm 45 years old. I don't know if you remember that we used to all only have four channels, and if you used to want to watch a program, you'd have to um, sit down and watch it exactly when it was on. Um, and, uh, and if you went to get a cup of tea, then you had to go in the break or you missed it. That was it. Where now we've all got Netflix and Sky, and so we just pause it and watch it whenever we want. Or we just record it and watch it whenever we want. Your freezer does exactly the same as your Netflix or your Sky subscription. You cook when you want and you eat at a different time. You eat at a different time when you want to um, have that meal. You don't have to take the cooking and the eating and put them together. Instead, I'm usually, you'd find me here in my kitchen on a Saturday morning, I'll have my pajamas on, got Netflix on, catching up in a series. All the kids are quite happy running about doing their own thing on a Saturday morning, and I will get 10 meals done and get them in the freezer. I quite enjoy it, it makes me feel ready for the week. It, it, 10 meals is quite easy, as I'm going to go through and show you. But I then put them in the freezer and press pause. And then whenever I want one, I just go back and get it out. And so it's exactly the same. It's making, it's, it's modern. People think batch cooking is old fashioned. Think of it like Netflix. It's so modern. You don't need to cook in the witching hour when you want to eat. Not every night anyway. So, um, and also, I don't know if you saw that in the press, the government have also said that um, after, when they've been looking back at coronavirus and in terms of how we um, were all scrambling for food and shopping and all this sort of thing. Um, so there was a big um, report that came out saying, should the government offer parents a freezer? Should it be something that everybody has in their house? You know, because then what it does, what a freezer does, is it gives you your control. You can shop, you can know that you've got things in. If you went into, if you got coronavirus and had to be cooked up in the house for two weeks, then you would have enough supplies in your house that you are self-sufficient. And that's what I love about batch cooking as well. I got into this living in a hill farm. It takes me one hour round trip in a car to buy a pint of milk. So if I wasn't organized, I would not be self-sufficient. I'd be relying on somebody else. If we have bad snow and we're stuck in at home for two weeks, I would have to be reliant on trying to either get out in the bad weather or get somebody else in. Instead, I freeze milk, I freeze bread, dead easy okay right enough chattering let me show you some of the stuff okay so for anybody that doesn't know so i started off that i did this book this is my original book okay and this is the one if you have never started with because there's a few of them i would recommend this one this is probably the one that is like your absolute basic everything in it and then i made this little one which is all about meal planning and you sort of fill it in if you want and then we went on to this one, which is the healthy batch book, okay? And um, you'll be interested in the next one, which I'm writing at the moment, but I can't tell you about. But as soon as I can, I'll let parents be small because it's going to be the best one for parents. But anyway, and the reason I'm mentioning those books is I'm going to go through some different scenarios that you can do when you're batch cooking, and we'll refer back to the books as well, okay? So, because um, there's different ways that you can batch cook. So there's, you don't need a lot to get you started. So let me show you. Let me bring out some stuff here, just to get you started. Let's find it. Well, the best thing that you need is a big pot, okay? Two big pots, preferably. Not, not massive ones like this, but you could go for like one this size, that's about a five liter, and maybe a 10 liter pot. You can pick them up in Ikea and Asda. They're not expensive. You probably want one that will go from the top of your oven into your cooker. So you don't want one with a plastic handle. That's what I'm trying to say. Like if I, was, if I had this on the top of the oven and I wanted to put it in my cooker, I would just turn it upside down so the handle slipped in and put it in like that, okay? So um, this one comes from Ikea. I think this one's about seven pounds out of Ikea and I use it nearly every day. So two big pots is a must. Um, and if you do end up getting a giant one, they are really handy. Oh, I keep lids in them, sorry. I keep other lids in. Um, so yeah, big pots are really handy. That's what you really want. The other thing that you want that is 
quite good, and I use all the time if you follow me, is spoons, measuring spoons that are in cups. So you might know that in America, they use lots of cup measurements and stuff. The reason that these are good is if you're doing a recipe and you have to get the scales and you have to start weighing and measuring, you get your scales out, then you've got to get an extra bowl, don't you, that goes on the top of your scales. And then you measure something in like butter and then it's a bit dirty. So you have to get something else for the dry ingredients. If you have cups, you literally go spoon, 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 spoon. My measure, all my recipes come in measurements of cups and grams. Using the cups just means that you're cooking way much, way quicker. So if you're doing, say, my 10 meals in an hour and you're just spooning it in and out, it works really well. The other reason cups really work really well, as I show you at the bottom of the recipe, is um, how many to portion out. So if you imagine that you've made a big spaghetti bolognese and um, you've doubled the recipe, okay? So you've got to get eight portions out. You don't need to weigh and measure those portions. A, a cup of um, bolognese is for an adult, a half a cup is for a child. And what it allows you to do is portion control really well. That portion control is good for being healthy, but it's also good for making sure that you get the most out of your meals because um, rather than have a little bit that's left over that might just say two people and you put it in the fridge and then you've forgotten about it forever um, and then you throw it in the bin at the end of the week you can portion it out and straight away think oh I've got a two and just write on it you know spag ball for two get it in your freezer there'll be one night that the kids are doing rugby or football or whatever and you only need enough for two or you're going out with your husband, maybe when we all get to go out again, and you only want to feed the kids. So they're having spag ball you can bring out too. So again, it saves you tons of money and tons of waste. So you need a big pot. You could do with some cups would help you. And then you need a few things to store um, your stuff in. So you're either going to use bags like these, and these are non-reusable. When I say non-reusable, they're not called reusable bags, but you can wash them and reuse them over and over. But they generally last about 20 washes, as opposed to if you buy these type of like P P E V A, these are called. You'll see these going kicking about lately. Um, they are reusable like 300 times. So you can just wash and reuse them all the time. But these little ones, like say from IKEA. You know, you, could, you can still wash and reuse them, but they are going to eventually get a hole in them and sort of die. But you want some bags and you get all different brands of bags like you've got here. And it doesn't really matter what brand you get. If these sort of big thick baco foil bags are brilliant for anything that you think might leak because they are like indestructible and never leak. But again, the little Ikea bags work just as good. I love these, they come in all different sizes. So they are perfect as well. And they don't cost very much money. And um, your PEVA ones are a bit more expensive, but they last over and over again. Um, so I would still recommend them as well. So you definitely want some bags. And the reason you want bags is you want to make sure, I can't really see myself because I'm like this big. So I'm just checking that hopefully you can see me if I've got something down here. Um, bags mean that everything that you make is stackable like that, look. And that's what the batch lady is all about, is stacking it all up. Because then if you've got a little three drawer freezer, which the majority of the world have, and you don't have a deep freeze, you can still fit in tons of meals if they're flat and stacked like this. I mean, tons of them. You'll get like 20 meals in a drawer, just stacked thinly. But not just that. You will, when you take it out, look how thin that is. That will then defrost a lot quicker. I mean, many of you all know, if you get a Matty's ice cream tub and you fill it full of soup and then you wait for that to defrost, you're going to wait about four days on that to actually defrost. Not only that, your children are going to think it's ice cream and be sorely disappointed when they see it's beetroot soup. But that is what you want, because if you forgot to defrost something, I'm going to go through and show you a really quick way to defrost something if, if you're not one to be remembering defrosting. But in terms of freezing flat, you really want bags. Bags are also the way forward in terms of, you'll notice there's no air in this bag. Okay, I've squeezed it flat, I've sealed it up, and there's absolutely no air in it, which means that your food will last a lot longer in your freezer because it doesn't have that hard freezer burn you're going to get. 
So one of the rules is if you're going to make something, don't put it in a massive container if it's only half full. You want the container to be just a little bit bigger than your actual meal if you're putting it in a container. And if you're putting it in a bag, you just want a tiny little bit of leftover room just to allow, allow it to expand um, because that stops freezer burn. Okay, but meals in general, because people always wonder how long they last. These meals that are cooked will last three months. If you've got raw and you've not cooked it, um, then it'll last up to six months to a year. And if you've got bread products, they last a month. Okay, now everything lasts way longer than that, but that is the time that they say it'll be at its best. You know, if you leave a cooked meal in for four months and you go to eat it, it's not going to do you any harm. It's just going to have dried out because it's getting older and older if it's in the freezer. So um, you don't need to worry about stuff being in there for too long. Um, and another little bags that we've got are these. You get these from like the pound shop. They're called Tip and Zip. And they're very good if you've got soups or something because they stand upright. Sometimes you don't want to put soup in something like this. So these tip and zip bags work quite good as well. Um, and again, they're sealed so you can defrost them quite easy with the cold water method, which I'm going to go on and start to show you. And then the other thing is these sort of ones. I think you can see that. So that is, um, these dishes are brilliant. These are Pyrex dishes, they're glass and they've got plastic on the top. And these are how you would store things that you can't put in a bag, like your lasagnas, your masaka, um, enchiladas, anything that you need to be layered up and left nice, maybe a cottage pie, something like that, then you want these. The good thing is about getting these Pyrex ones is when you want to use it, you can just take the lid off and put the thing in the oven take it back out and it actually looks quite nice to serve in. So you're not having to scoop it between all different dishes if you want to serve it at the table. So just to round off, you want some bags, you want some um, Pyrex dishes if you can, some spoons in a big pot. So it's not a lot and you've probably got most of that in your house. And if you don't have spoons or anything like that, you don't need to worry too much. And the only other thing that you definitely need is a chalk marker which you will get in like Tesco or anything like that. You want to make sure that you label everything that goes in your freezer, okay? Because if you don't label it, you'll look at it and you'll think, oh, right, I'll remember that that's some dried tomato hummus. No, you won't, no, you won't. It won't even look like hummus. You'll take it out and you'll be like, right, oh, we're gonna give it a go. And we call that UFO, unidentified frozen object. You don't know what you're going to get. So make sure you write on your bags. If you write in your bags using a chalk marker, you let it dry for a couple of minutes, then you can put it in the freezer. And when you take it back out, when you wash that bag in warm soapy water, the chalk marker will wash back off. So you can keep writing over and over again on your same bags, okay? And I don't recommend using a biro on bags because you actually pierce the bag and sort of make a, make a hole in it, which you don't want to do. Right, so that is how you store your sort of stuff. Now I want to talk about how you actually batch, okay? So I don't know on here. I mean, put in the comments, maybe um, Geraldine can let me know, like, are you a batcher? Is this something you've done before? Or a lot of you starting from scratch? I'm just sort of telling you as if you're not done it before, but perhaps you have. Um, so how do you want to start? If you've never done this before and you find it quite scary, is you want to double up. That's all you want to do. Don't worry about doing 10 meals in an hour or three to the fridge, three to the freezers. I'm gonna go through in a minute. You just want to double up. So have a think, get a piece of paper and have a think about what your family like to eat on a normal week to week basis. Because I don't know if you know this, but as a nation, we eat about the same eight meals over and over again. So, um, so you probably have the same sort of thing that you're used to. On oh, Tuesday we have this, or Wednesday we have that. And um, if they are feasible, then if you're making, let's take, um, oh, I don't know, this one, chicken dejeuner that we eat quite a lot. If I'm making that, and I think, right, the kids love it, it's really easy, then I will just make another one. So I've got all the ingredients out. I'm going to make one. You may as well make two. It takes about four minutes more to make another one. If you think about all the little herbs and the this and the that and that you've got out, then you may as well just double it up. 
portion out, one goes in your freezer, one goes in your fridge, you are batching. You have just given yourself a whole night off of cooking. And that's what you have to think when you double portion. There is like the one that the kids are chomping in on just now. And there is gold dust of a whole free night that you don't need to cook a dinner. So I would say start doubling up on your favorite meals. And the way that I sort of do it when I meal plan is I double up on the nights that I'm not busy. So like on a Tuesday night, I don't have a great deal on. I come home, we're generally home pretty early. It's a meal that I'm making and I'll double it. And I'm quite happy to double it. It's five minutes more. Then I take a bit of time to put it in the freezer. No great shakes. Um, on a Thursday night is my manic night, which lots of you guys will have as parents where you're sort of like in the door, back out again, back in, back out again. That's the night that I will have a frozen meal ready to go. Because I just think I want to wake up in the morning and have a meal that's already prepared. So straight away, just by looking at how busy you are in your evenings, you're able to see what nights you're going to cook and what nights you're going to eat from the freezer. And if you're new to this, just choose one night that you're going to double and one night you're going to eat from the freezer. Because I tell you what, cooking like this is addictive. Once you realize how good it is to walk in from work and just take a meal out that's already prepared from you, I mean, it, you will not go back. You'll be like, you, you'll be doing 10 meals in an hour in no time, believe me, okay? So then once you've done your doubling up and you're getting used to that, you can always then start to do what's in my book. So all of my books, when you're doing one recipe, let's just pick any recipe. And the recipe, hold on. So when Suzanne, uh -huh. Suzanne, Debs has asked, do you double up in the same pot? Oh yes, yep, just double your ingredients. Yep, double everything, get it in the one pot. And then basically you just know that half the pot is for tonight and the other half is for another night. So really easy to do. Um, but all my recipes as well, Debs, also show you, um, say you're making six recipes out of the one pot. The recipe will always tell you how many to portion out per whatever you're doing. It doesn't leave you with a big pot and say, right, off you go, just portion it out. It carries on and gives you the sort of end of it. So I'm just come over and show you this page. So this is, um, so every recipe is twinned. So if you're making this one, you can also make this one at the same time. And it tells you about halfway down the page how to jump to the next recipe. So this is cottage pie with root vegetable mash. And this is shepherd's pie. So, um, and this one's with sweet potato mash. So they're very similar and they use similar ingredients, but slightly different. Again, if you're making seafood chowder here, it uses almost the same ingredients as making a fish pie. So what you can do is if you think, I'm used to, I've made fish chowder four times and I've always doubled it and it's perfect to know how to do it. Think I'm going to make fish chowder and fish pie and I'm going to double both of them. And all of a sudden, that is going to only take you about 10 minutes more and you're going to get four meals, two fish pies, two fish chowders. Okay, so that is the way to sort of start batching. Have got any other questions just while we're at it? Debs is asking, which book is that from that we've just had a look in? Uh, this is from my first book, which is called The Batch Lady Shop Once, Cook Once, Eat Well All Week. But, all, but all my books are twinned recipes. So any book you buy has a twinned recipe as you go along, okay? And then in this first book, and these are online as well, so don't feel like you just have to run out and buy a book. I'm not trying to sell you a book here. On my website is hundreds of free recipes as well, okay? So, but they're split into their single recipes. So this is if, if you want, there's not, I don't keep them as doubles on there. And the recipes in the book are different than the ones on the website, okay? So you're not going to see the same recipes, but there's plenty on the website. So if you're, you know, if you don't have a massive budget, don't go running out to buy a book, check out my website first, because it's all free. And all my social media channels, because I give tons of recipes free there as well. Um, so in this book, we then go on and look at 10 meals in an hour, which might sound like a lot. I'm going to bring one up here for you. But it's so simple. I can now make 10 meals in an hour in 23 minutes. That's how long it takes. So I'll just, I'll just chat you through it. So how 10 meals in an hour works. 
is you make five recipes using the same similar ingredients, okay? So let's take the minced meat one, because we all, most people have mince. If you don't, if you're vegetarian, you could do it with corn mince, it would work the same. So I would get a big pot of mince going and I would put in it and I give you all the, exactly how much to do and you can follow it along. And um, I would be cooking up some mince and onions that are going to make fajitas, spaghetti bolognese and chili. That's in my pot, that's cooking away. Now I've got like 20 minutes to wait or 15 minutes to wait on all that mince browning. You can't really do anything. You're just standing about sort of giving it a stir every now and again. So I'd come back over here and with some more raw mince, I would make burgers and I'd make meatballs and they go into the freezer raw. So you don't need to cook them. So lots of recipes that I do, it's not about putting it in the freezer once it's fully cooked and it coming out and tasting like leftovers. There's quite a lot of stuff that is just goes in raw that you don't need to cook, you're just preparing it. So burgers and meatballs, you can make, you can make eight burgers in five minutes. It's only got three ingredients. I mean, it's as easy as pie. And then you've got four in one bag, four in the next. And then what I do is when I put them in the freezer, I just put some burger buns in the top, four burger buns in one of these bags. And then it's just sat there ready for a meal. You can even, if you're highly organized, put four bits of corn in the cob beside it. And then you've got, you don't even have to think about it. So I've made my burgers, I've made my meatballs, still stirring my pot, coming back, label them up, put them in the freezer. And then I go and get my pot and I take out into some little bags, I portion out um, enough mince and onions that I need for my fajitas and I put in one of these fajita sachets and I put in some frozen onions and I seal it up, wait for it to cool and off it goes to the freezer. And then I've got my pot left and I add in my cassata and my tomatoes and my herbs and I portion out what I need, following along my instructions, it's there just step by step, portion out what I need. And there's my spaghetti bolognese, lay it flat, wait for it to cool and off it goes. And what's left in the pot, I add chili powder, two tins of kidney beans, and we have made, in one hour, two family meals of chili, two family meals of spaghetti bolognese, and um, two fajitas, sort of middle of your fajitas, and um, two lots of bur family of four burgers, and two lots of meatballs, just like that. Now, as you look on YouTube, You'll see that video, you can follow it along. I did it with Aldi. Um, Aldi paid me to do a video using, doing my 10 meals in an hour just out of Aldi. And it costs 33 pounds to buy those ingredients. That's 33 pounds out of Aldi and you get 10 family meals out of it. And 10 home cooked good family meals. Now you do have to add your sort of like, your bag of rice that goes with the chili. So give yourself 40 pounds by a 10 you add in your other little bits, but still 40 pounds for 10 meals, 10 good home cooked meals is amazing. And I do that with chicken, with fish, with lots. At the end of this month, I've got an audio book coming out called 10 Meals in an Hour from Audible. So if you want to, you can just stick it, stick me in your ears. Very annoying because I hate the sound of my own voice, but sorry about that. Um, stick me in your ears and just follow along and I sort of chat you through it. Now I'll take this off the, and it's, it's exact timings of what you need. So you can just follow it along. So there's 10 meals in an hour, okay? And then also in here is, what I like to do is called one meal, three ways. So lots of you guys will be used to eating the same meal. Let's pick one actually, that we always eat. I'll just pick, I'll just pick a random. Three ways with, that's too random. Three ways with macaroni cheese, right? Macaroni cheese is quite a normal sort of meal. And you'll be thinking, oh, I just ladle it out and eat it every week. Well, there's different ways that you can do it. I want to show you here in terms of parenting. I've got an adult way where you, add, you can add some um, fish and like lobster, little lobster tails that you can get in Tesco. They're quite cheap. You add some garlic and you put some um, breadcrumbs over the top, put it in the oven. Oh, delicious. Um, lobster mac and cheese and then macaroni cheese for um, toddlers that you can just add and then the same stuff because none of my recipes have salt or 
pepper in them. So you can just make it into baby food. So if you are a parent that is feeding all different age groups of people and you want one meal, you can make one big vat of macaroni cheese and you can portion it out into toddler meals and you can zip some up with a bit more milk and make it into baby food and you can add some garlic and some herbs and some grated bread over the top of it, tomatoes and some ham or a bit of lobster and it is a proper adult meal. Yet you have at one point previous to that just made a load of macaroni cheese. You know, so it's really simple. Um, what you need to remember when you freeze stuff, and this is why you sort of have to follow my recipes. If you just make macaroni cheese like you usually do and you bung it in the freezer, when you take it back out, it'll sort of, some people say, it goes a bit mushy. My recipes show you when, if you're, using it, if you're making it for the freezer, you cook the pasta way less, okay? So that's where you have to sort of follow the sort of, um, the rules of freezing, really. And the reason you cook the pasta sort of al dente is if you think about it, when you bring it out of the freezer, you're going to have to heat it up till it's piping hot again. So you're going to be cooking that pasta a bit more. So if you've cooked it to full amount and then taken it out, um, it's just, you're just going to cook it to mush. Um, I'm going to give you another one with three ways. Here's another one with um, mozzarella and stuffed meatballs. So this is where I've made meatballs and just stuffed mozzarella in the top. We're doing spaghetti and meatballs. Another night I'll do um, meatball subs and put them on like a roll and make them very American. And then I'll do a meatball salad as well. So I wouldn't do that all in one night. I'd make a vat of meatballs, put, make three different ones, put them three of the same, put them in the freezer. But when I write on them, I'll write on exactly what to do. This one's with subs and some chips. This one's with um, spaghetti. This one's over a salad. And all of a sudden, your family think you're creating all different meals, but you're actually using the wrong core meal. Yes. Another question from Debs. Um, she's wondering if your latest book is best for families or are they all good um, for families? It's all family cooking. So this one, the latest one, is called Healthy Family Favourites. So this one is calorie controlled and is very healthy. This one is just traditional, normal meals. So they're all, everything I do is about feeding the family. So they're all good for the family. Um, so either one, it doesn't really matter. This one's more low calorie, but not for the kit. Like what I'll show you, what it does in here, I'll show you this one is quite good actually. So um, when I give you a recipe, down the bottom of this recipe in this healthy book, so I make, you know, do you know why I made this? I made this because I'm a mum and I do, I've got a teenage son who's 14 who eats me out of house and home. And my husband is six foot three and can also eat a lot of food. And then I find that I don't always want to eat the same as what they're eating because I'm a 45 year old menopausal woman and I'm just going like this. So I always often, what I don't want to do is cook a different meal for me. I want us all to eat as a family. So these meals allow you to cook the meal, put it in your freezer, and then when you come out, bring it out, it says to serve the lighter serving. So this is taco boats. It's sprinkled with low fat pre-grated cheese and have it with a large salad. And the family serve is topped with grated cheese, sour cream, crumbled tortilla chips. I give you like the make it a family one and make it your locale one for every recipe. So you can decide you're all still eating as a family. Nobody would even notice that you weren't having the cheesy naturals on the side. You're having a big salad and a bit of everything, but it's lower calories. So that's this recipe book is a bit more about eating a bit healthier than this one, which is just your traditional meal. So that's how it works. Did I answer that question? Okay, Deb. What else have I not told you? Ooh, one more question. Uh, Debs is asking if that's out now, that book, that, that your latest book, is that one out now? Yes, they're all out. Yep, they're all out just now. You can have them all. Do look um, on my, when I do Instagram, I quite often put on um, my stories. I'll quite often put on an Amazon if there's any special deals. So for instance, these are like 20 pounds each, um, but do look on Amazon because I think at the moment they're like 12. So there's always good deals. So definitely look day to day on what's going on. And they are in all supermarkets as well. So all my books sell in every supermarket, Waitrose to Asda. In fact, I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah, it does, Asda. 
Um, and they're usually like 10, 12 pounds. You're usually not having to pay the full price to do this and that as well. I shouldn't be telling you that. My publishers would kill me. They're like, buy the full price. Um, right. And one more. When is the new book coming out, please? So these ones are all out. Yeah. Um, my new one is coming out next September. So you've got a while to wait because this one here is only just out like a month or tw six weeks ago. So um, you've got to give me time. I'm flustered. I've got to finish it. Um, so yeah, I think it's about next September. They may pull it forward a bit earlier, but that's about generally it. Um, now I'm going to move you over to my sink because I want to show you something over here. Let's see if you can see my sink from there. Let me get you down a bit. Can you see that? Okay, I'm going to bend down. Okay, so I just want to explain about if you forget to defrost meals, because a lot of people do. So if you get into this batch cooking and you decide to give it a go, what I would say to you is think about a time that you're in your kitchen every night um, and set an alarm on your phone and take out the meal the night before. And that sounds like I'm never going to remember what, how to do that. But if you put a permanent alarm on your phone, whether you want a meal out or not, at six o'clock, if you're not taking a meal out, it goes off to switch it off, but it just allows you that time to really sort of remember, am I taking a meal out or not? Um, if you forget to take a meal out, do not worry. A lot of them can be, let me just grab it again. This book here has a page in the front and it gives you a big list of all the dishes, all the meals in the book that can be cooked from frozen. So if you think you're going to forget to defrost stuff, they would be, that list would be a good starting list for you to, to batch these meals and get them in the freezer because they can all be cooked from frozen. So, um, you know, if you want to, if you know you've got a night where you're running in, you've got 10 minutes, you want to bundle something in the oven that's going to take an hour because you're going out to football and you want to eat when you get back, then they're the exact meals that you sort of want, okay? But if you completely forget, you can defrost other ways. You can defrost in your microwave. And if you do, just make sure you use the defrost button, which you'll probably, a lot of people don't know what one it is. Don't defrost on your normal temperature. It's gonna start cooking it before it defrosts and it's not good for you. So go away and just, if you don't have the instruction manual as I don't, then go on YouTube it, you'll find it. Somebody will tell you what the button on your exact make is. Press the defrost button, which is about 300. So if yours is on temperature, even if you can't see a defrost button, make sure it's down about 300 and it'll take a bit longer, but it will defrost in the microwave for you. But another way is I filled my sink with cold water here, okay? Freezing cold water, never hot. And then all you do is just take your bag, make sure it's completely sealed. If you find it's not sealed, just put it in another bag and put it in the water. You can stand it upright if you want. Give it about 10 minutes, give it a squish, give it another about 10 or 15 minutes and that will defrost instantly for you. So cold water defrosts frozen meals very quickly. Okay, you cannot defrost in hot water. It doesn't work as well and you will make yourself ill because what happens is you don't want to start cooking the outside of it when you've not done the inside. Now, and the same with these, if you want to put the cold water method, just fill the cold water up to about here. One of the things you can't do is let water from your sink go into a meal. You can't do that, okay? It's gonna make you sick. So you just put the water up to about here and just leave this sat in some cold water. I would probably give, this might take like, I don't know, I'd give it 20 minutes, give it a stir around, give it another 20 minutes and it'll be defrosted. So um, cold water defrosting works amazingly well. That's why I brought you over here. I was gonna put it in, but the water is gone. Let me bring you back around. Check you can see me there. Um, did I have anything else for you? Phil, I'm sorry, I've just I've just chatted. It's quarter two. Any give me any of your questions that you are unsure about if you think I'm never going to try this. Let me know anything. I've got a couple of things just here, Suzanne, uh, that's come up in the chat. And then maybe if anybody wants to just um, ask a question, feel free to speak for yourself. Uh, Gemma just said during the, whoops, 
I got your first, I got your book last year and it saved my life during the first lockdown. We saved so much time and money. Plus it saved my sanity with my children having meals ready. Thank you so much and lots of kisses. And Carol has said, can you freeze lasagna in a dish and use cling film or foil or do you need a dish with a sealed lid? Ah, now that's a good one. Um, you can use cling film and foil, but if you are, I would say foil is the best. Cling film tends to uncling in the freezer quite often. And really you don't want to waste that dish. So you want to make sure that it's completely sealed. So no matter what you use, just make sure that it's airtight. So if I was say, didn't have a lid on this and I was using cling film, that's what I, do you know what I'd generally do? I'd put a bit of foil over the top and then I'd cling film it like that. You know, not just like sticking it around the top, but actually cling film it round and then seal it down so that I just knew it was completely sealed. The, the main thing I think is the more you seal it, the longer it's going to last. Righto. And the next one, uh, Lindsay has asked, which book would you recommend for vegetarian recipes or are most meat and fish? She says um, her family is a mix of veggie and not. Ah, then. Is it Lindsay, did you say? Yeah. Lindsay, I'm going to recommend for you this healthy family favourite because out of the 100 recipes, I think 77 are vegetarian and ones that aren't, or not that they're, they're not all, how will I describe it? They can be vegetarian. Does that make sense? Um, the ones, the 33 that are left are just meat. But what I do do is, let me find one. I do this thing here. So this is, oh, I've turned on to tur turkey taco boats again. Make it veggie, okay? So I give you a make it veggie symbol. And this one says, put a veggie twist on the dish, swap the turkey mince for fresh or frozen plant-based mince. I'm not allowed to say corn, but that's what it basically means. <laughs> taco filling in the same way. Um, remember, plant-based mince tends to cook quicker than meat, so just adjust the cooking time as per your packet instructions. So, as you know, corn only takes like five or ten minutes to cook, but if you were cooking chicken, it's going to take longer. So, these little make it veggie will really help you out, Lindsay. That's the one for you, I would say. Perfect. Lindsay says, thank you very much. Uh, Shelley, just a quick comment saying your second book is on my wish list. And Alison has asked, any, any tips for small freezers? Ah, yes, I can give you lots for small freezers. I would say freeze flat, as I've mentioned before. The other thing that I, I would say is look for my, in this book, is three for the fridge and three for the freezer. And online, I've got some three for the fridge, three for the freezer recipes. They're a bit like 10 meals in an hour, but for small freezers. And if you, I write for the sun. Now, please don't comment, lots of people hate it, but I write for the sun every week. I believe everybody should be allowed to have recipes no matter whether you read the times or read the sun. And coming out in their Sunday Fabulous magazine in a few weeks, I'm doing lots of three for the fridge, three for the freezer in their magazine. It's gonna be free if you buy the newspaper that's the little magazine that goes in it. Now, what this is, is I started creating this for people that say, I don't really have enough room in my freezer for 10 meals in an hour. So the way that three for the fridge, three for the freezer works is you make three recipes and you make them at the same time. And it sort of, you jump between the recipes and I show you how to do that. And you double those three. And I show you how to do that. So don't worry, you don't need to know any of it. You just follow it along. So you've made three recipes and you've doubled them. So say I made this, say I had chicken petrosini and then say I had, this is an aubergine stew and these are stuffed frozen peppers. So imagine I've made that and I've got six because I've got these three and I've got the other three that I doubled. Before you go to freeze them, when you've just finished making them, you wait for them to cool. Three of them I just stack up and they're going in my fridge for this week. That's three meals that I've got for this week and the other three are going in my freezer and they're for a busy week ahead. So they are really good for small freezers. And my last top tip is, imagine this is, let me think, imagine this is a pie, okay? I've made a pie and it's either got mashed potato or say it's got phyllo pastry or something on the top. So you've made it and you've put it in one of these dishes. 
what you can do, say the chicken pie. Let's use that for example. You'd think a chicken pie had to be frozen like that. I would freeze a chicken pie with the chicken pie filling like this and the roll of ready bought puff pastry beside it. Because the difference of how much it takes up in your freezer is huge. And then when you take it out, frost it, pour it into your pie dish, roll your pastry over the top, and that's all you're doing then. You're just assembling it when it comes out the freezer. So any big pies of that, freeze them separately. Brilliant. So first of all, just a wee comment from Gemma. She has to go and do the school run, but thank you so much. She's really enjoyed listening. Uh, Batch has changed her life. I hate cooking meals for my family, but love pulling a meal from the freezer for them. It gives me more time to enjoy a gin and tonic. <laughs> I am with you on that. <laughs> um, Shelley is asking, once defrosted, do you have to use the meals that day? She said, I'm bad for not fancying what I've taken out by the time tea, come, tea time comes. You don't have to use it that day, but you do have to use it within, they say 24 to 48 hours, you have to use it in between. So um, you don't have too long. So my tip for you is to only take out one meal at a time. Um, and, um, and also remember, if you take it out and you don't really fancy it, as long as you're not cooked, it'll last till the next again night. If you don't fancy it the next again night, try to make it into something a bit different. So if I've taken out chili and I think actually I don't really want to have that I just don't fancy it at all I might actually serve it over nachos and put some cheese and jalapenos and just try to make it a slightly different dish so try to have a think about things like that but yeah you've got 48 hours and the main thing to remember with stuff is when you take it out once you've cooked it that means that you've cooked it twice so if you take out if you decide to freeze it and you freeze a massive amount you take it out and you cook it, you can't reheat it again. So just freeze in portions that you know you're going to eat. If you're a family of four, make them a family of four. If you're a two, make them a two. If you think you all eat at different times, you might want different stuff, portion them all into twos. And then the worst thing you can do is have a portion of eight. And then you think, I'm never going to need, need to use that. So. Lovely. So um, Shelley says, Fabi, thank you. Um, I've got a wee question and that was, I've never seen those measuring spoons before. I've got little measuring cups, but the measuring spoons look great. Where is there anywhere in particular you can get them or is it an eBay, eBay Amazon kind of search? So my website, www.batchlady.com and um, I have a shop. It's not a shop I make money from. It is an Amazon shop, which means I put up all my products that I use on a daily basis that I recommend are the best ones. And then every day Amazon changes the prices depending on what has been sold for on Amazon. So if you have an Amazon account and you want to buy these and you click on them, it'll go into your Amazon account and then you just buy them through Amazon. But it's a way of people like myself being able to say, this is the brand that I recommend is the best. And I'll always give a top quality one and a cheaper one, but whatever's on that shop is recommended. And all the spoons are on there. Everything's on there that I've talked about today. And then I saw somebody pop up about freezing sandwiches. Can you pop up and say about freezing sandwiches? Can you freeze sandwiches? Oh yes, can you freeze sandwiches and children's lunches? Yes, without a doubt you can. Um, you need to know exact sandwich fillings. So just check out my YouTube channel and put in Batch Lady Freezing Sandwiches. And um, as long as they are like cheese and ham and I mean, most stuff freezes, soggy stuff does not freeze well and don't put your lettuce and your tomatoes on your sandwiches. But I freeze filled bagels, I feel, uh, freeze paninis and um, sandwiches because in the summer holidays and that, I love the fact that my kids can take a sandwich out and they can put it in the toasty and make a toasty maker. Also, if they take freezer sandwiches out, by the time they get to lunchtime in their school box, they've stayed cool and they've also defrosted. So um, I freeze, I make sandwiches en masse because I'm, I'm making packed lunches for everybody and everything goes in the freezer. Brilliant. And so Sarah says, great, thanks. Um, was there something about a signed book, Suzanne? Yes, I'm going to give you <laughs> of my first book, 
I'm going to sign it and put whoever wins this, but I don't know how you're going to do that. I'm going to let, I'm going to put all the pressure on parent space since I've done all the chatting. Parent space will come up with a way of giving, I don't know, choosing someone, or doing a competition. I don't know what you want to do. And I will um, give you a signed copy of this book and wing it in the post to you. Fantastic, thank you. How long have you been batching? Is my question. Um, so I've been doing the batch lady for three years now, but I've been batching since my child, my first child was born and he's going to be 15 this week. So 15 years I've been doing this. Um, yeah, but three years, basically someone at the school gates finally said to me, well, you just show us how you do batch cooking. And so um, 20, and my, one of my friends had cancer at the time and she was raising money for cancer research. And I said, why don't you all pay X amount, come to my house, we'll put all the money to cancer research and I'll show you how I do it. And um, somebody recorded it and said, let's put it on YouTube. It's going to be life changing. And here we are a few years later. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So Ali says, she's the administrator at Parent Space, names in a hat and we can contact whoever wins. OK, so from everyone who came along today, names in the hat in order to win that book. Any more questions? We're on our final four minutes. Oh, Carol says, thanks for answer answering my lasagna question. A question about mashed potato. Yeah. Is it okay to use, sorry, is it okay to add the milk and butter before freezing? And how is it best to heat the defrosted mash? I did it once in a saucepan and it started to burn. Okay, um, yeah, okay, so um, I'm really bad for um, using freezer ma uh, mash that comes from the supermarket, you know, that you'll find in the fresh aisle, because I love it, because it's really easy. If I'm making fish pies, I can make two fish pies in five minutes, and it's got the same ingredients as what you make at home, so I always recommend that as well. But if you want to make your own mashed potatoes, that I'm too lazy to do. But um, when I do do them, just make them like normal, okay? Make them like normal, put them into... Um, a tub or a bag or something put them in the freezer when you bring them out they will separate okay and you'll start to heat it up and you'll think oh it looks a bit yucky the heat will bring it back round again and add a spot more milk or a bit of butter and give it a mix and it'll all just come back together again so i would say if it started to burn it's probably slightly dried out in the freezer you just need to add a bit more milk and give it a mix around but actually probably for something like mashed potatoes if you've got a microwave heat it in the microwave, heat it for a few minutes, give it a stir around, give it another heat. I don't know if I mentioned this, but remember everything that you reheat has to be piping hot. So you want to make it piping hot, let it cool for a couple of minutes and then serve it to your family. You don't want to cook it till it's just hot enough for a kid to eat. You need to have it piping hot. Brilliant. Uh, and Sarah says, thank you so much. That was a very enjoyable session. Final, oh. And um, we've got Carol saying, thank you so much. I hate peeling potatoes, so would rather batch mash. <laughs> Anybody got a final question for Suzanne? No. Excellent. Oh, well, not excellent, but yeah, <laughs> one time is what I'm thinking. Everybody's off. <laughs> well, can I say thanks for everybody, Suzanne? It's really informative, inspiring. Yeah, I've really enjoyed listening to you. I do batch occasionally, but I'm going to try a little bit more because it is, it's it's so saving time and headspace and all those things. And it's not difficult. Yeah. Honestly, it's not difficult. Please do give it a go. I'd love you all to come over and follow me on social media. You'll find me on at the Batch Lady, where I give top tips every single day and it's all free. Perfect. Right. I'm going to say goodbye. If, if anybody wants to unmute themselves and say goodbye, that would be great. Lovely having you all along. <laughs> right. I'll see Thank you all you. later. Thank, Thank you.